Roleplay Recon does not own any parts of the movies we recon, nor are we associated with the people who make them. Also, as a general warning, I'm probably going to do a cuss and talk about many mature adult things. The soundtrack for this series features music by the Pine Hill Haints. Check them out anywhere you get music online. Previously on Roleplay Retcon does the Dark Tower. Yeehaw! We are here to keep a low profile and to count horses and maybe a couple other things. Somehow they knew where we camped. Ice at the sheriff station for strange people who roll into town? What does the sheriff wish you would do? <sighs> he really wishes you would just kind of fall off the face of the planet. He wishes that you would get out of his hair, get out of his town. He doesn't want anything to do with you. He wishes you would get lost. Fuck yourself. We killed a horse! It was an accident! Well, maybe we should uh, talk to some of the locals and see if everyone's here as, uh, as weird as the law enforcement. Yeah, that's fair. See if everyone else has got that same plastered on smile. Well, it's dark and it's raining And the moon won't shed a light And my police won't travel Down this dark road Before we get started in earnest, um, I had acquired five grit. I, I, I'm going to use that five grit, uh, which I can use to get a new skill. Um, and since I failed two stealth rolls, I figured I'd get stealth as a skill. I think that's an excellent idea. Go ahead and give yourself a stealth skill. Done and dunner. And why are you good at stealth? Well, they say practice makes perfect. I, I was about <laughs> to say, because you sneak up on a Len all the time. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Good deal. So, good job getting stealth. <laughs> uh, you can do other things with grit as well. Um, not just adding skills. Can you give me, like, I know you probably went over this, but can you give me, like, a quick rundown if you've got it in front of you? Okay, so using grit, you can use it um, to ignore me when I suggest that you have to play one of your character's aspects for a worse outcome, which I haven't done yet, but I will do, and I'm excited about that. Um, you can also use it uh, when you play one of your character's character aspects for a better outcome. You can spend one grit and take a plus one to a roll after it is rolled. So it's kind of like if you remember when we played uh, Fate Core how you could use your fate points like that. You could add to it or you could re-roll. Um, it's, it's pretty similar to that. So grit may be spent to buy new skills. And um, the skill points, maximum of plus two. So, so the cost is plus uh, five grit per new skill. And you can also get a new, like an additional skill point to one of your skills that you already have with grit um uh, okay and is that five can, is that five yes that's five as well okay it can be okay. spent to change a character's archetype or twist when there is enough fictional reason to do so which has not occurred but that's also five grit um you can use it to resolve a character's issue when there's enough fictional reason to do it which hasn't happened but that's also five grit and you can recover recover from a permanent body disability, which has not happened, but that is also five grit. So basically, all you can do right now without rolling is you can um, either buy new skills or add a point to an existing skill. Okay, so you do not want to get a new skill or add a skill. You want to save them up for the other things. I think I'm going to save. Yeah. I not and not and indeed I not it sister I not and not in my phone again Tell a tragedy of the man called Fang I don't know Had a running hunting for the old white thing I don't know He tossed him around and then some then some I don't know Had him a time 
Caroline from Lim from Lim from Lim from Y'all are standing outside of the mayor's house, and it's about dinner time. Well, that could have gone better. It could have gone worse. What do we do now, Roland? Well, take a look up at the sky. We could either head back, make some dinner, or see if there's some place in town to eat, see if we can get, I don't know, get better sense of the people here. I mean, the sheriff's given off a super weird vibe. You know, that's current, that's normal cowboy slang, a super weird vibe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alain, I want, Alain raises his eyebrow and he goes, are you looking for someone in particular? No, no, just, uh, you know, like maybe there's a, a saloon or something. We can get a meal and see if everyone else kind of gives off this strange, overly cheerful. It's got to be a mask, right? Well, I like that idea because if we go back to our bivouac, all we're going to have to eat is Elaine's beans. And doing that more than twice in a row is going to be hell on our digestive system. Yeah, we can't we can't just live off beans. No. You guys are such good 14-year-old cowboys. I just have to say, I'm loving it. <laughs> Sorry, continue. I'm 15. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You think in all your extra year, you'd learn how to make a better bean. My beans are very good. But you know what? Even gourmet food three times in a row is not good. Yeah, you got to cleanse your palate. I let's go saloon. I saloon can't wait time. to find out. I can't wait to find out what the name of the saloon is. Uh, yeah, so I think we'll start walking back towards town. Um, Good deal. So you guys start walking back towards town. It is. Um, it's getting. It's getting darker. Out. It's not quite full dark. Um, it's dusky. And um, as you guys look around, uh, you made it to the town center downtown. And um, it looks like there are a pair of, what are those called? The swinging saloon doors? Are they just called saloon doors? They're just called saloon doors. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all see a pair of saloon doors uh, on one of the... <laughs> on one of the buildings, and above the door, the sign reads, Traveler's Rest. Hmm. Oh, I was hoping for a pun. We're, we're travelers. We're in need of a rest. All right, so uh, you three just walk right on into the Traveler's Rest there. Um, before you is a pretty... Um, Rundown tavern. There are some round tables strewn about the place with stools next to them. There's a grody looking bar with not a lot behind it, a couple of barrels, a couple of taps that you can see. Um, on the far end, there is a piano, and uh, beside it are some. Uh, a staircase that goes up to the second floor. There's kind of a dingy, dusty chandelier hanging from the ceiling that has been adorned with antlers. And there is an older, larger, baldish man standing behind the bar, and he is... Doing his classic barkeeper thing. He's wiping out a out a pint glass with a rag. <laughs> um, you pretty classic. much <laughs> you pretty much don't see anyone else in here. He looks up at you. You serve meals? <laughs> and then he looks at, at the three of you and says, Mmm, y'all ain't from around here. Why, of course we serve meals. Come on in, partners. Well, thank you. And I saddle up to the bar. Alain is uncharacteristically excited about going into this new social situation. <laughs> and he also saddles up to the bar yeah. and asks, what's on the menu? Well, yeah, I'll today join we, we got stew. We don't usually serve 
people at this time of night. It gets a bit livelier later on, and uh, we don't usually serve gentlemen quite as young as y'all, but I can tell that y'all are of the good sort, and you've, you've picked the right establishment here. Now, and, sir, I've got, hmm. I've got one question. Uh-huh. And one question only. Mm-hmm. Does your stew have beans in it? It sure does not. We'll take three bowls. <laughs> all right, all right, but is it meat? Is it a meat stew? Yep, venison. Okay, all right. Not muty? Child, we have, we, child, we do not have muties Ooh, around here. Child, we, got, we don't got no muties around here. We got the best stock of venison. What are you trying to pull? I, I eat this stew myself. I'm sure you, I'm sure you do, but, so as, as, Chef to chef, I just am, you know, I, I, I care about what I put into my body. <laughs> uh, he chuckles, a, a good-hearted chuckle, and he looks down at you a bit. And then he uh, calls into the back, Seamus, three bowls, please. I don't suppose you could overlook a, I don't suppose you have any, maybe, graph that's not, not so tough. Maybe you got a little bit of light graph. Graph light, maybe. Doesn't have so many carbs, you know, in it. <laughs> he looks I like... I should stop doing pa- parodies what, what of the Dark Tower. What are you talking about? Well, graph is a drink that's in the Dark Tower. It's it's just an alcoholic beverage. He, he looks at you like you have just asked for caviar. <laughs> he, he, withers, he withers and he goes, I don't suppose you have tea. Mm, yeah. We got some tea. Y'all three want tea? Uh, yes, sir. That would be fine, actually. None of us will be. Uh, you don't have to worry about serving us. We And I, I'll look down the road at us. Uh, we're, we're here uh, with some work, and we're not to be drinking while we do it. Unless in that drink happens to be uh, whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Seamus, uh, three teas, please. Uh, so, um, where are y'all from? Uh, we come from, uh, come from Inworld. Hmm, yeah, I could tell by your accents and your clothes there that you must have come from Inworld. You from Gilead? Uh, only one of us. Yeah, that'd be me. I'm from, uh, I'm from Gilead, a rancher's son by trade. By trade, huh? That's right. Mm. They had a vacancy in the family, and I took it. I <laughs> see. That's usually how it how it happens, huh? So wh- tell me, what what are you three boys doing out here in uh, in Midworld? Well, uh, as you uh, notice yourself, we've all just come of age, and we've gotten our first assignment uh, from the affiliation. We're out here to uh, to count heads of livestock, and uh, just really just to take account for everything that exists out here. Mm. And he uh, he raises his eyebrow when you say affiliation. Well, of course, I'm sure y'all have uh, become acquainted with the sheriff. We are all, as you know, very, very loyal to the affiliation. So uh, glad to have you three here. Oh, I want to get a read on this. This is the second time I've heard it. <laughs> all right. Do you want to um, do you want to roll me in? What is it? Uh, yeah, read a person. Read a person, yes. So it'll be uh, soul plus empathy. All right, so that's a seven. Ooh, seven. Okay, um, so you can ask me uh, a question. Is your character telling the truth? What is your character really feeling? What does your character intend to do? What does your character wish I do? And how can I get your character to blank? Uh, is your character telling the truth? Negative. Ah, boy. This is no, not good. I mean, they're not exactly... He's not exactly lying through his teeth, but he is not being completely truthful, no. Okay. Uh, well, that's uh, that's mighty nice to hear. Uh, it's, everyone here has been real friendly so far, so we imagine it won't take us, oh, I imagine a couple months to count all the livestock and 
head down to the the coast and catch you know fish and nets and all that stuff oh i'm i'm sure it won't take you that long but if it if it does then we'll be mighty glad to have you and at that moment um the door next to the bar uh that's clearly from the kitchen area opens up and you see a very young boy um probably around age 8 come out with a big tray with three glasses on it and three bowls he looks like he's having a little bit of a hard time he's very dingy and dirty oh size here here is your your food and he puts it up on the counter and he bows at you three well i tip my hat at him and say thanks kid yeah it's quite right, Seamus, warm welcome all on. around mm, get the get the tray and get back in the back room oh yes sigh he bows again and he he puts the the bowls and, and glasses in front of you, takes the tray and scurries on into the back room. What do uh what do people use for money in this world? Money. <laughs> yeah, just just coins of various yeah, kind. Just coins. Yeah, milled yeah. coins. I, I want it before he goes back in the back I want to go, hey kid and I I oh. flick him a coin. He reaches up and, and catches it out of the air, and you see him smile very broadly. He's missing a couple of teeth, and he says, Wow, thank you, Sai. And then he runs back into the back room. Um, the bartender, who you have not gotten his name yet, uh, glares at you a little bit. Now, y'all don't have to be nice to him. He's just a, He's just an orphan kid. Well, from where I'm from, we just call that tipping. Hmm. Around here, you might do that with cattle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very funny. Very funny. Well, all right. I, I got some stuff to do in the back. I'll leave y'all to it. I'll be back, see if y'all need anything. And he starts walking toward the back. I I, like, lean back, and I go, Hey. It was funny. All right, Mr. Gourmand, why don't you try the soup first? It, it's it's a little old, but you know that uh, that lets the flavors mingle. You know, stew's always better the second day, anyway. Uh, yeah. As we eat, I just want to take a look around. Um, you know, see the stuff that's on the walls, and um, I know you mentioned that there was like an upstairs. Like, I don't want to physically get up and and wander around, but just see if anything interesting sticks out. Uh, on the walls or, you know, in the building. Sure, yeah. Um, so uh, behind the behind the bar, there is a large, what looks like an elk's head that's been mounted. Um, and the chandelier has got some antlers on it. Um, at the opposite wall of the bar is a fireplace. Uh, there is not currently a fire in it. It's it's pretty dead. On the mantel, um, there's nothing really exciting on it, like a couple of knickknacks. The walls have some plaques here and there, some wooden bits. It's not very well decorated. It doesn't look super nice or super clean, but it's not disgusting, I guess. <laughs> Um, on the on the tables, there are candles. Um, they're mostly half burned, and there's a lot of wax on the on the center of the candles on the table. Um, behind the bar, though, underneath the elk's head, you do see a shotgun. And up the stairs, you can't really get a good glimpse, but you do see a railing. It looks like there are probably some some doors up there. I'd be careful. I'd be careful, Bert. You get too smart. He's got some heavy lead behind this bar. Well, I expect he'd have to be sober enough to shoot straight. <laughs> Besides, I probably put a steel shot between his eyes before he even touches it. I know you're good with that thing, but I think slingshot versus shotgun, the shotgun wins even if the guy's half blind. Well, he will be half blind when I put out an eye. Uh, while you three are having your chat and enjoying your stew 
in iced tea, which does not have ice in it. So it's just room temperature tea, I guess. <laughs> um, which is also fine. It's not great tea, but it's not spoiled or anything. Um, so at, at that point, the doors swing open. And a very tall, very thin, middle-aged woman walks in and, and looks at you three and just kind of walks past you up the stairs. And to the sound of the doors opening, the barkeeper comes from the back room uh, just in time to see the woman walk up the stairs and he nods at her. She doesn't really pay him any attention either. Uh, so, boys, how's the stew there? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty mm -hmm. good. So, for, I like it. Good, good. So, from one cook to another, how's the venison? Does it taste muty to you? <laughs> I definitely would say that the venison is one of the better parts of this. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> well, all right. Um, now... I just got some um some some stuff to be doing and you know some rowdier folks are going to be coming in later so uh whenever y'all are finished I'd be happy to take those bowls away and take your coins and and see you on your way Well I'm, I'm sure we won't be in the way right where we're at Besides, we're going to be sitting around here a while. We might as well get to know the town and the people in it. Right, right. Well, uh, of course, now I did not mean to imply that you would be any trouble. I just mean, you know, some round your folks come in and you know how people get. They sit at the same seat every night for the last 25 years and... See a couple of whippersnappers who aren't drinking anything sitting in their seat. They might get a little bit testy. You know how it is. Just wanted to warn well, I'm you. I'm sure we're, f we're flexible. We can yes, move seats. Yes, uh, that's completely fair. Is there uh, any particular table you think might be better for us to move to as we finish up? <sighs> he takes a second and looks at you, and then he uh, he nods at, at a table in the corner um, on the same wall as the saloon doors and he says no one really sits over there that's that's really the designated traveler's table but uh you know no rush right now no one's coming in yet and then he picks up another pint and starts wiping it out oh, well good to know uh when we come in here we'll just start heading to that booth and uh we'll think of that as our own little spot why that's such a good idea y'all three Boys sure are nice, and I cannot imagine what y'all three must have gotten into to get sent all the way out here, right? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it's... Elaine, Elaine killed the horse. <laughs> yeah, part of the reason we're not partaking in uh, in the drink while we're here. Oh, mm-hmm. Boys will be boys. I, I get it. Just don't be killing no horses run here. We'll be fine. While we were riding in, we did see quite a few horses uh, out on the drop. If you had to guess, how many horses uh, between all the ranchers out here? He looks at you and, and raises his eyebrow before chuckling. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I'm just, I, I just work in this tavern. I'm not a rancher. I don't know stuff like that. I'm sure there's a normal amount of horses out there. We got... We got plenty of ranchers. Who uh, whose land was it? Uh, you know, I'm not sure actually, and I'll I'll explain uh, the part of the road to it because I you know I don't know whose land it was, uh, so I'll explain where it was on the road and which side it was on. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think that was the old rockin' rockin' B or the lazy Susan. I don't really know. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, normal amount of horses, dozen or two, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, that sounds about right. I'm going to get up and start moving over to the table. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no, no, I'm not, I'm not talking to this man anymore. 
taking my stew and I'm like, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. So Roland goes over to the table. Alain. Alain, Alain kind of swishes the uh, the last of his tea in the bottom of, of his glass and he, he takes the last swig and he goes, tea was okay. I uh, might have been better with a little ice. And he just sort of scoots his glass across the counter and joins his friends. <laughs> okay. Um, the barkeeper doesn't say anything. Cuthbert hasn't left the uh, the bar yet, and he just gives out a long whistle. Do you, do you mean Cuthbert? Do you mean Cuthbert? C- oh, uh, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> Cuthbert. Okay. Cuthbert is also there with him, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is why I was confused at first. Yeah. Uh, just lets out a long whistle. Uh... I suppose there's there's no... Like a slide whistle? Uh, yeah, he pulls out a slide whistle from his pocket. Uh, I suppose there's no, uh, you know, horse kill and weirdos. Uh, I'm going to be going over, over there now. Okay. <laughs> that kind of fell apart. Pulls out a slide whistle and does his best Harpo Marx impression. <laughs> deal um he doesn't say anything to any of you three he just kind of looks at you in in (laughs) just like he's kind of done with it (laughs) as you three seem to be and uh he walks into the into the back Uh, a few moments later um the little boy that you guys saw previously runs up to your table with new glasses of tea well, thank you. Uh, it, oh, thank, thank you, Sai. Now, uh, kid, I forgot. What, what's what's your name again, kid? Sh- Seamus. Seamus. Make sure you hide that coin from the uh, the old man. Don't want him taking that away from you. Oh, that that's a good idea. I'll put it in my pocket. He'll never see it there. There you go. Here's another one to keep you company. Oh, thank you, Sai. You are so good to me. I really, I, I appreciate it. Keep that one in your boot. Most people think to look in your pockets. That's right. People think that feet are smelly. Oh, that's so smart. You guys are so smart. And he puts the coin in his pocket. And he says, I haven't seen you guys around here before. Where are you from? Oh, we're from Inworld. Oh, that's so cool. I'm from here. I was born here, I think. Oh, yeah? I don't really know. I I think my parents died when I was really little. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, it's okay. I don't really remember them. And I get to work here, and it's so nice. Well, it's nice when you guys come in, which is the first time. I like you guys. Thank you for the coin. And then he just kind of runs away awkwardly. <laughs> That's a good kid. What a strange response. Like, hey, how many horses are here? A normal amount. Yeah, what's a normal yeah, amount of horses? Like, I would actually really like to know something, that, actually. Something's weird here, I mean, right? Like, we can't dig too much into this one guy. Maybe he doesn't know how to count. Maybe. I don't know. I, I feel like I go by the old adage of... If you don't know, you say I don't know. You know, better to keep your mouth shut and let people assume you're a fool than open it and confirm the fact. Well, Cuthbert wouldn't know anything about that. Not everybody <laughs> studies the old adages as fervently as you do. I don't know. Do you really want to hang out here the whole night? I mean, if everyone's going to be like the three people we've met so far, I mean, with the exception of Cuthbert's uh, new betrothed, I'm not sure I want to run into a lot of these folks. I do reckon we need to make our way to the Delgado farm or ranch uh, sometime or another. That could probably wait for tomorrow. Well, what I'm saying is we could probably get some shut-eye. Yeah, I mean, she she sure said not to talk to... She said to talk to the mayor about the horses, but he sure wasn't interested in it today. Why? Why would they not... Seems like he'd brag about it, right? Seems like he'd brag out both ends of his body about how many horses the town had. Seems like it'd be their pride and joy. Yeah, you know what? 
and I'm I'm gonna stand up and and holler back to the uh, the barkeeper. Well, here we go. Uh, he he comes out of the door and he looks at you three with a with a half smile on his face and he says, "Yeah, boys." Uh, sir, I'm sorry. I sure didn't catch your name before. It's uh, Cheb. And you three are. Uh, my name is Roland. Mm-hmm. Alan. My name's Cuthbert. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just had a quick question for you. I know you said you didn't know much about the the horses here, uh, but I was wondering if you might know. We're looking for the head of the uh, the Ranchers Association. We were told when we got here we're supposed to meet up with Pat Delgado. Do you happen to know where he lives? <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, y'all must have gotten some uh, old information. Uh, Pat Delgado is not the head of the Ranchers Association anymore. That'd be Hash Renfrew, who's uh, over at the Lazy Susan. And um, he seen, he pretty, he's pretty busy. I'm sure he wouldn't really have time to talk to y'all guys right now. But maybe tomorrow I hear that the mayor's having a big party. Yeah, he is. I'm sure is. he'll be there. Oh. Uh- can I ask what uh, did did Pat get voted out? We uh, yeah, we were sent here specifically with his name. <laughs> voted out? That's funny. No, unfortunately, some misfortune befell old old Pat, and he's no longer with us at all anymore. This jolts a lens so much his hat almost comes off. Are you all right there, young fella? Oh, sorry. Uh, I guess I'm just <laughs> real scared of death, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's probably for the best, actually. Don't think it's too smart to not be scared of death. Ah, uh, well, yeah, we'll, uh, I suppose we'll try to look up, uh, Hash, you said? Hash Renfrew? Mm-hmm, yep. The Lazy, the Lazy Bee? Lazy Susan. The Lazy Susan. Uh, yeah, we'll try to look him up tomorrow. Uh, thank you, uh, Sheb. Mm-hmm. And he, he tips his head at you three and goes back in the back. I feel like as often as he leaves, we should just rob this place. <laughs> 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 I start grabbing bottles. No, um, yeah, so I will uh, leave some coins on the counter um, and skedaddle. You see him pop out as you three are walking out the door. And he says, thanks for the coin, son. See y'all next time. Do come back now, you hear? Oh, you can bet on it. Live like the lead does. Fast and furious. But don't make mistakes like us. Hush, hush. Hey everyone, hey! Hello. Well, howdy, y'all! Oh god. How's it going? Uh, well, What's that? it's going pretty good, partner. I'm really enjoying this series. Are you how how it's, how are you, Cal it's, folks? It's it's Hop Along in- Hank. He's in he's invaded our rad break. <laughs> no, Hop Along Hank! Get out of here, here you scoundrel! Now now old Hop, hop on along. Is- this is God's country out here. Oh, hop along. Hank's got every right to be here as much as y'all do. Well, if you're sticking around, I'm leaving. No, no. Just, all right. I, I hope a, I hope a new cowboy character comes and replaces you. Well, I doubt it, but I'm going to go out this <laughs> swinging door. <laughs> well, it, well, that, well he- hello. It's me, uh, cl- clap along Curtis. Oh, you you seem like maybe the worst kind of cowboy. I am. You know I the... got the clap. <laughs> no, I I will cut that. <laughs> All right, no. fine. I will leave and come. No, I won't come back. I, maybe someone else will come back. Goodbye. Hey, y'all. It's a. Uh, it's the same person. Jane. Yeah, it's the same person. You know. <laughs> you oh, I'm. Oh, did you forget your keys or something? I was putting on my accent. Oh my god, this break is already too long. Let's go. Hey everyone, can we? I hope you're all enjoying the series right now. I am enjoying it. 
I, but also I'm riddled with anxiety and I really hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm enjoying it, Jensi. It's, Aww, it's, it's you. been a lot of fun. Thank you, Alex. You're welcome. You know who else probably enjoys it? Our special guest, uh, Rev, who we'd like to thank for, for joining us in this, uh, this beautiful mess that we call Roleplay Retcon. You can check out his, his, uh, you can check out his show. Um, it's a it's a it's a really awesome monster of the week podcast called the Crit Show. They also have a stream, uh, the Omniverse Chronicles, uh, which has a bunch of guest GMs running in original campaigns. Uh, the current one they're running is I Hunt, which is a game about hunting monsters in a gig economy, which is an interesting thing I've just said. The uh, I think I'm pr- I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure. Like the person who invented the game is running the game. Is like running that that's, campaign. That's super cool. That is super cool. Yes. Um, we would also like to say a big thank you to the Pine Hill Haints, whose music we are using in this um, this series. I am super fortunate. I got to see them in a drive-in show, um, and they are really amazing. You should definitely check them out. They're on Spotify and Bandcamp Camp and lots of other places, obviously. And they describe themselves as Alabama ghost music. And I think that's really cool because ghosts are cool and, like, we're from Alabama. Anyway, uh, we have a Patreon. Do, Do you we? know that? It's, we haven't talked about it much. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't say oh, that was a straight face. Yeah. Um, we try to get two things out a month. Uh, we At the beginning of the month, you'll get a bloops reel, which is our, like, deleted scenes and kind of our bloopers. And, like, honestly, uh, it's not, like, just the garbage I don't put in the show. It's like, like, it's, it's like it's, 50% it's, of my best jokes that Ben's like, nope, can't have that out shining me on the podcast. Cut your <laughs> floor. It's, it honestly it's mo- is. <laughs> it's, it's mostly cut for, like, pacing and, like, uh, like like tone uh wise so like yeah some actual good fatty bits it's uh, funny. end up funny. end up on the floor yeah um and we also do a thing called randos where once a month we record something uh just especially for patrons um which we call producers yeah uh and it's not like it's so far it has never been a bonus episode of the show <laughs> like it, it's a. Uh, it's just it's just literally rando things it's just, like just I don't fun little challenge. stuff we feel like doing uh, mm-hmm. I read a story I wrote one time. Uh, one time, Alex made a bunch of curse words, and we all tried to decide what those curse words meant. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of fun stuff. Well, um, you know, we could probably consider our Christmas special a bonus episode. It's the closest thing. It's we've the gotten. closest thing. It's we true. we redid the entirety of the Christmas Carol uh, from uh, memory. Cr- <laughs> yeah, improv from memory. Yeah. Um, um, we've also got a Discord. Sorry, I, I guess I, I'm going to take two. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus, Ben. <laughs> uh, the Discord's cool. Um, you can find lots of chill people hanging out there. Uh, and we'll talk right back we, to you. We also <laughs> sometimes will watch a movie there, do, do a watch party. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, you can find the links to that, like, Anywhere we are on the internet, pretty much. Um, Just to be. We have our link tree. We have our link tree in most of our um, social media. Um, but it, it's, even, it's just, it's just link uh, tr dot ee slash roleplay recon. <laughs> and then you can find a Discord invite link there. Um, hey, did someone talk about Nerdsmith. Hey, Jensi, talk about Nerdsmith. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Nerdsmith. We are part of the Nerdsmith Network, and we are so happy to be part of the Nerdsmith Network. Nerdsmith is amazing. Nerdsmith. And we love them, and they have lots of podcasts and streams, and our favorite friends, our best friends, our are members friends. of the Nerdsmith Network, including, but not limited to, friends who I think you all remember fondly from the Christmas episode where we talked about uh, the Santa Claus Friends is on the uh, not only on the board of the mm-hmm. Nerdsmith Network, they are also on uh, the Land Above podcast, which is fantastic, and I cannot wait to hear mm-hmm. more of that. And um, Kim, of course, Kim, who you'll remember yes. from the Dungeons and Dragons series. 
Yes, love, we love them both. Love Kim, but love friends. We also just love Nara Smith also. This is also, true. also. Okay. So our next episode is on April 28th, and we look forward to uh, seeing you then. That's yeah. right. And hopefully my energy will be better in that episode than it was in this break. <laughs> well, we'll get you there. We'll, we'll get the, uh, the electric prod out. It's okay. Yeah. They're all hitting their 15-second forward button, so we're good. Cool. Yep. All okay, right. bye, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the episode. Bye, kisses. <laughs> lanterns some um street lanterns that have been lit so you guys can see your way uh perfectly fine there are people milling back and forth but not a huge hustle and bustle what do you guys want to do next well i guess we'll go back to our our little house set aside for us and we'll uh we'll get some shut eye yeah i think like on the way there just that conversation of he he sure seemed not shaken up at all by the he said it was a funny thing and that Pat had died by an accident I mean the information we came with didn't feel like it was too long ago yeah as fast as we uh we made the trip here it's awfully convenient yeah i got to tell you i'm not wild about the person that my father trusted the one person my father trusted here, the one name he gave us, having an accident when it starts, when it's starting to feel like most of these people don't want us here. Uh, Alin scoffs a little bit. He goes, <laughs> and he goes, look, I, I know that you're not so ghoulish that you're like happy that a man has died, but I, I remember we first started out, you couldn't wait for this to be over. And now you, uh, I don't. I don't believe that you're not super excited that uh, an adventure and a mystery has fallen into your lap. That you get to do. I think you're looking for trouble, Roland. And I think you should stop looking for trouble. Let's just count the horses and count the oil rigs. Do what we're supposed to do. We grilled that bartender till he was had grill lines on him. That was bad. <laughs> <laughs> We grilled that bartender until his natural juices seeped out of his skin. That was no, worse. So Stop. It was Lord. Worse. Yeah, it was worse. Anyway, and he he didn't know nothing. He didn't know nothing. Well, he certainly didn't tell us nothing. Look, I'm just saying, as paranoid as I usually am, I don't think anything. I think even if there is something going on here, it's not. it's not our job to go looking for trouble. You know what I think, Alin? I think you're so set on being afraid of trouble that you don't want to see any where there is some. It That shuts him up, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, well... Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just... I, he'll say, maybe I'm just tired. <clears throat> tired? You're 15. <laughs> Alin, if there's one thing I know you're good at, it's keeping an open mind. You make sure you let us know if you sense anything weird from anybody, because it just doesn't sit right. The one name my father gave us, dead of an accident. And quickly replaced. But you're right. You're right, though. I ought not be looking for trouble where we're not sure there is any, but 
Birthright too. Don't be blind to it if it's standing right there with a gun pointed at you. Let's go to bed. I want. I want to go. I want to go to this party real bad. <laughs> <laughs> if you just sleep, it'll it'll sleep long yeah. enough. The party will be here, right? Just, and so I'm now just, it's I'm, I'm going. Now it's time for the cowboy on, cuddle puddle. I'm going on like Luca, Lucas Arts rules, <laughs> or like or like, you know, we go to the bed and we click on it. And it says if you sleep now, you'll go to the next day. Is that okay? <laughs> mm-hmm. Nice. All right. So um, while y'all are heading out of town, uh. Roland, are you keeping an eye out or anything, or are you so engrossed in the conversation that you're not really paying attention to what's around you? I'm definitely looking for the girl from the other night, like, as we go through town, just in case. Especially now that I know that her father died. Yeah. Well, lucky you, off in the distance, going into town uh, on another street, you happen to catch a glimpse of a girl who... Just might be Susan riding a horse into town. Uh, is she alone? She is. Oh, boy. There's no good way to approach her, especially like with her whole like, hey, don't know me if you see me. Yep. Um, I, I will ride on the outside of our group so that I'm clearly visible. And if she reacts, I'll head that way. But if she doesn't, I'll I'll do what she asked and and not, you know, know her until someone introduces us. All right. So you are riding on the outside of your group, but you are keeping a real close eye on her face at all times to see if, if even the slightest glimpse of, of recognition comes upon it. Uh, And you notice that she does a little bit of a double take toward you. Um, She just happens to glance over and then, a very strong uh, double take back to you. Her eyes get kind of wide and she shakes her head the tiniest amount and looks forward and okay, nudges okay. her horse a little. Yeah. Hold hold on. Mm-hmm. Do I know this move? What? <laughs> Do I know this move where he rides on the outside of the group? I was about to address this, went- yeah. I was going to say, it's probably right. unusual. Well, I probably right. usually hey, correct yeah. in the middle. <laughs> hey, hey, Roland, so- uh... You got some space that that a Lynn fart or something. It's all them beans. I I I, I want to know if I if I notice this yeah. double take. So um, I'm gonna say that um, Cuthbert and a Lynn, you three usually ride in pretty strict formation, not because like you have to, but it's just natural. Uh, Roland usually rides in the middle, slightly ahead of you two. Cuthbert's to the left and Lynn's to the right. So the fact that he purposefully broke formation, I think you two would notice this, yes. So I've made a change to my character sheet, and I want to know if it's okay. What? I he's like, did, he's like, I'm rolling I've been now. <laughs> I've been doing, I am rolling now. <laughs> um... I <laughs> no, I'm rolling. I, I, uh, <laughs> no, I'm, no rolling. I'm rolling. Oh my I, I am. I've been doing the touch rolls wrong. Um, I should not have had the touch as one of my skills. Um, okay. The touch should have been a weird move, which doesn't really go on your skills. I think. Yeah. So I want to replace the touch with just the general awareness skill. Okay. I will allow um, it. Is that okay? Okay. Um, so I want to know, though. I want to. Did I see this? Did I see this double take? Did I see this like moment? Roll. I'm rolling. <laughs> You're not rolling. You're not rolling. <laughs> <laughs> That's the title of this episode. Oh. <laughs> We're all rolling. <laughs> we are rolling. That's a good one. Oh, oh, god! It took me a second. I was like, did I miss something? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, five plus two plus. One is eight. I got an eight. Um, yeah. You notice. This is my highest skill. I am the most aware boy on the planet. <laughs> For some, I, okay, I'm i sorry. That wasn't a nice thing to laugh at. All right, Alain, if you are aware, I would like... Um, I don't know. It kind of was. I'm sorry. I would like more awareness roles then and for you to maybe play your character as more aware. So tell me why you are good at being aware. It, I don't need to make it a weird role, but maybe just the touch is like part of that. I've spent my entire life being preternaturally aware okay. to the point that it is just my most developed skill. Okay. 
it may, it maybe it's like a radiation off of the touch. Like it's like a passive thing the touch lets me do is I'm just like generally an aware person picking up on things. Okay. I have like like the guy from Psych. I have his vision right where uh, the little the clues glow and stuff. I don't. <laughs> I've never seen that, but okay. I don't have a television. So um yeah, I don't know what television is. So uh, what I'm gonna say, Ben. Is if you want okay. Cuthbert, I mean, if you want Lynn to have this, then I would like for you to act more aware of people's intentions and such. Um, and then it will need to be a character choice if you want to purposefully ignore that. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Um, but yes. Um, as someone who is intensely aware and as someone who rolled a high roll, I'm going to say that, you know, since since Roland did break formation and you were naturally looking over toward him, since he was riding in between you and the girl, I will say that, yes, you also noticed Susan's double take. Is that her? Yeah. Try not to gawk. Is that who? <laughs> oh, don't worry. I mean, she's pretty, I guess, but... Oh, is that... Is that Roland's girl? Apparently. That's that's Roland's distraction. So she's, like, behind you guys now, so cute bird, if you want a good look at her, you gotta turn, like, around in your saddle and, like, really <laughs> make it obvious. Oh, I do. All right, good. Get your, get your opera glasses out. <laughs> <laughs> this will actually be perfect because... With him turning around and gawking, <laughs> we can totally play it off that we didn't notice her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somewhere down in old Ireland, where they don't drink much water, just whiskey and tea. I see you lined up against the wall. Said the morning through me. So you get back to your bunker and um, nothing is immediately amiss. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. You don't need to roll for it. Um, uh, uh, what does that mean, though? <laughs> what do you mean immediately amiss? I mean, if you are wanting to no, that's, search that's, to that's see... That's metagaming. It is. But if you are I'm wanting... I'm just on to you. <laughs> if you are wanting to search to see if something am is amiss... Then you know you'll need to roll some die for it, but dice for it. You know what? Uh, on this level, I, I think it's always like I, I gotta imagine it, it's just like a gunslinger thing. When if you're in a in a strange place and you've left some things, important things, in a place for a while, you go and you make sure those things are still there. All right, make sure the things are still there. This is a routine thing, though. It's not a, like, yeah, this is not a we suspect anything. Okay. It's like, is everything good? Yeah. Checks for the monsters under the bed. You know. All right. Good deal. So uh, that'll be good. So every time you guys come back to your place, we'll just assume that you do that. Okay. Is there a... Raffle, 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 raffle. Is there a uh, stable attached to our, our place here? Um... Some place to keep our horses out of the elements. Stable... No, there's like um, I don't know what to call it. Like a um, a shed with no walls. There's a roof. Okay. And some places to tie your horses up, and you know, inside it there's like a trough. All right. Yeah. What do you call that? I don't know what the name for that is. Like a manger, I guess. Yeah, I'm just thinking of uh, like a carport, but that's yeah, not... carport. I was thinking that's ex that's exactly <laughs> the word I was thinking. Hey, yeah. let's let's just let's just put them in the horse. Right, in the horse port. Yeah, there's a horse port. <laughs> yep. Well, I, I take Glue Boy there, and I I tie him up next to the trough, and I take his saddle off, and I brush you him take down care a little of bit. Aw, you're so nice. You gotta take care of your horses out in the west. That's so nice. Do you guys follow suit? Yes. I guess. I will not be out. I guess I'll take care of my animal. <laughs> I won't be all done by cute bird. <laughs> all right. Y'all are taking care of your horses. And I guess it would be an investigate. 
An investigate skill for when you guys come back to your bunker. Rolls all around. Okay. Um, yep. All right. Uh, ten. Nice. I've been getting to do my good skills in this <laughs> episode. Nice. Investigate would be what, mind? Yes, that's mind. Yeah. I got a two. I also got a ten. Oh, okay. Um, Cuthbert, while you're looking around to see if anything's amiss, you accidentally knock something over behind you, and when you turn to look, you're like, oh my gosh, this is on the ground. It was definitely on the on the that, that table the, before. That was there. That was there. So you think that something is amiss. Uh, the other two do not. You, everything is right back where it was. There are no weird tracks around the bunker. Your pigeons are totally cool. They're not freaking out or anything. But Cuthbert, you think that something's wrong. All right, something definitely knocked this over, and it wasn't me. I think it might have been you, actually. Can you prove that? Well, I saw you do it. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Th- what is I it? Think what I is th- it? We have to. We have to stop like referring to it as a mystery object that he's not. <laughs> it was a tobacco pouch. <gasps> Was it my father's tobacco pouch? Yes. All my steel shots are probably everywhere him. on the ground now. Yep. Well, I'll be spending the next hour picking all this <laughs> I'm up. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's just a really funny image to me of his, like, steel balls flying everywhere like Skittles and him going, Who put these? Who, <laughs> who did <laughs> this? <laughs> Someone laid a trap for belt? us. <laughs> All right. He's like he's like a you turn to a Metal Gear Solid enemy. <laughs> Whose footprints are these? <laughs> All right. So I assume you guys just like do your normal like nighttime stuff. Does anyone want to do anything interesting? Or out of the <laughs> usual, I mean, not not interesting as in like this isn't interesting, but I mean like <laughs> <laughs> like like start with the bottom row of teeth before I go to the top. Yes, exactly. I I definitely read Something out of homilies and meditations by Mercer before I go to bed. All right. So you do your nightly reading. I'd probably go just straight to bed. All right. Cuthbert, you soar some, saw some logs. Saw some, some logs. logs. Saw, <laughs> saw, saw, saw some them up real good. I, it, was, it, was a, it was a mix between snore and saw is what happened. How does, how does Cuthbert feel about reading? How, how, how would he, what are his feelings on reading? I mean, reading's got its place. It's definitely one oh, okay. of the more boring activities you can partake in. I'll be honest, I was baiting you into saying a lie. <laughs> that it's for girls and nerds? It was nerds and ladies. Nerds and ladies. And ladies. <laughs> all right, Roland? Yeah, I think I'm going to go to sleep, too. This has all been a, been a lot to take in. Yep, so you three go right to bed after your long first day in Hambry. It's a short life of trouble Though we were to part It's a short life of trouble Little girl for a boy with a broken heart So, um, what are your normal morning things as young gunslingers? Apprentices and actual gunslinger. Clean the guns, take them apart, clean them, put them back together. Okay. I clean my slingshot, I take it apart, and I put it back together. (laughs) (laughs) I I shine the balls. They all got dusty on the floor. He Mm -hmm. polishes polishes the wood. Mm -hmm. I feel like, okay, stop. (laughs) What? (laughs) I just saw... In the future, where that listen, no. if you have anyway, a problem uh, with Cuthbert polishing his balls, well, got to keep him shiny <laughs> and buffing his wood, you take it up, stretch my bands. needs of a prestige, a prestigious slingshot. Mm-hmm. I I actually think that like a Lynn has like a hygiene routine, like as much as you can have, you know, sure. being a cowpoke on the road. I I feel like maybe he's figured out a way to make it compact. Mm-hmm. Um, but he actually like washes up. 
uh, as best he can. Okay. I'm not saying he has he has like moisturizer or anything, but like I think he likes to use soap if he can. Okay. Um, you said that he doesn't have moisturizer so suspiciously. <laughs> like he doesn't have <laughs> moisturizer or anything like that. I mean, well, I have a skincare routine, although I've not been taking care of it recently, mm. and my face is a raw red mess. I mean, but like he could have moisturizer if he wanted to. I'm saying I don't I think even he would not like pack that for a long trip on horseback. I think he would. It comes <laughs> in a little tin. I guess what I mean. You can pick some more up at the general he's store. He's got he's got he's got a bar of good soap that he likes. Okay. All he, right. He springs for it. Okay. So he got it for, he, it's from Gilead, you know. All right. So uh Elaine, you go out to the well out back and you start pulling up some water for your washing up. And um, you look down the hill, and you see a little kid just, like, sprinting up the hill toward y'all. Hey, is that a little kid sprinting up the hill toward us? No one can hear you. You're outside. Yeah, we're inside. (laughs) (laughs) We pan back, and he's talking to the horses. (laughs) I kind of, like, wave at him a little bit just to tell... Tell tell them that I like. No, I can see him. Hey, is it? He waves hi. back, big, huge wave over his head. You know, like little kids do. Do I recognize them? Yeah, as he gets a little closer, you're like, oh, that's definitely the little kid we met last night. Oh, Seamus. Oh. Seamus. Interesting. I will wait for him to get here. I will not meet him halfway. Wow. <laughs> Okay. Way, way to be a new friend. I'm just. A, I'm a little. I'm a little shy. Hi. And slow. He he runs out. Hi hi hi. Are the are the other ones here too? Um. Hi. Uh. Seamus. Right. Yeah. Oh. What's your name? Um. Alain. Yeah. It was nice uh, to meet you last night. I'm yeah. sorry I didn't tell you my name then. That's okay. Where Where are the other ones? And he just uh, kind of dances around, you know, like little kids. All right, uh, all right. They're uh, they're inside. You you looking for someone in particular? Uh, well, I mean, I wanted to see all three of you, but 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 my friend, my friend. I want to see my friend. All right. I uh, I go knock on the door and I say, "Hey, uh, we have a visitor, guys." Is it Roland's new girlfriend? No. No, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, your new buddy. I peek my head around the corner. Hey! Oh, hey, friend! kid, how's it going? Hi. Oh, what's your name? Oh, I didn't, I didn't introduce myself at all yesterday, did I? My name's Cuthbert. Aw, oh, Cuthbert, nice to meet you. Yay! And then he runs up and he tries to hug you. Well, I, I hug him back. Ah, thanks, Cuthbert. And the other one too. That he's here. The one that you just met. His name's Alin. Oh yeah, I got that one, Alin. Yeah. And then this big scrawny, uh, scraggly guy behind me. His name's Roland. Oh, Roland. Oh, my new friends. Oh, guess what? Guess what? I have something for you. Any? He... Oh, what's that? He pulls out of his pocket a tiniest little scrap piece of paper. He says, look, it's paper, and it has something on it, but I can't read it, but it's for you. And he hands it to um, Roland. Oh, I will open it and see what it says. All right, you open it, and it says, um, the affiliation boys are cordially invited to Mayor Thorin's party tonight at 7 p.m. sharp. At the mayor's house. What's it say? What does it say? Yeah, what's it say? What's it say, Roland? <laughs> Very similar energy. Um, well, uh, I guess the mayor wasn't all talk. Seems like we're headed to a party, boys. <gasps> we're we're headed to a party. Yeah, I love parties. I you know I like parties too. Ah, that we have that in common. We do, cause we're friends. We're best friends. Yay, best friends! And he tries to give you another hug. I I give him another hug. 
<laughs> oh, party! What are we gonna wear? What are we gonna wear? Alinda, did you did you pack our party clothes? I packed my party clothes. You didn't think about our party clothes as a collective, Alin? It's a shame. It's a shame you think so much of our friendship. I know where you can buy party clothes. Oh, there's a real good store in town. They don't let me in because I don't have a lot of money, but I see people go in and out and they have the best clothes. What's it called? And does it have a pun name? Uh, I don't know what that means, but it's called <laughs> Taylor's Taylor's. Ah, that's actually pretty good. Well, I expect we'll need to get us some party clothes. Oh, what a good idea. I mean, I have some, but, you know, I'll, I'll go with you guys, you know, just because you're hopeless and you might need a little help. Oh, my gosh. You know, blend it in. I can't wait till we all go to the party together because we've all been invited. Did you get invited, too? What? You said, what Roland said we were going to go to the party. You're right. That means me too. That means because you are you're my guest. Oh, that's so nice. That was so nice of them to include me with you guys. That was super nice of them, wasn't it, Roland? Yeah. Yep. That's sure what it says. Aw. I'm <laughs> so just much... kind of staring at the ground. <laughs> oh, I gotta get some party clothes too. You know what? I might be able to find some somewhere if I look for it. Mm, yeah, I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go try and find some and look for it. Bye, guys. Bye. And he just starts running down the hill. <laughs> All right. He's like a whirlwind. He is very energetic. You know what, Olen? It might not be a bad idea for all of us to get new clothes. Like, I know they're having this party in our honor, but it might not hurt to blend in a little more. Well, if you insist. I, I imagine if it's stuff they're selling in town, it at least might be closer to what everybody will be wearing. Have a shopping montage. Yeah. <laughs> Just shopping us sitting montage. on a on a bench shaking our head no and yes to different outfits. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's exactly Let what happens. Let me go crazy for a shop dressed man. <laughs> yeah, there's the, there's the whole, like, single curtain for the single dressing room in this place and, and you each come out one at a time and, and do fun little poses and the other ones they just shake their heads yes I mean no 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 and then finally the perfect one and then you're all like yeah what do these look like are they like tuxes or what somebody cue the right said Fred <laughs> uh no they're not tuxes so um you know they're just nice looking cowboy clothes like fancy cowboy okay. clothes with like Waistcoats and like nice flat brimmed hats and nice boots. But if you want to specify what your clothes look like, I'm cool with that. Yeah, I was going to ask if anyone had any, uh, like who's got a vest or who's got a jacket, who's got a hat. I definitely think that uh, Huthbert is a vest man. Nice. Yeah, I definitely have a. I definitely have a a, a hat. Mm-hmm. Alin? I like red. And I think I'm, like, dressed like... Not exactly like Cowboy Curtis, but, like... <laughs> like, it's more along... It's more along that line, right? Like, it's like I'm wearing cowboy clothes, but they're brand new. <laughs> so they're, like, not dirty or rough get, or anything. So get I'm, some sequins going on, a little, some Roy mm -hmm. Rogers. And Somehow yeah. he's wearing yeah, four yeah. I, don't, I don't know if it's that... I don't, I don't know if it's that high, uh, but I definitely am... Uh, Sort sort of a it it looks cartoonish, even though I think it looks great. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, yeah, you've got some like fringe, <laughs> some like shiny metal making, details. I, I keep making a Lynn the Ross of this group, and I have to stop. <laughs> no, it's too late. You're already there. <laughs> Cuthbert would be the Joey. <laughs> wouldn't no. wouldn't I be the Chandler? No, he, he's definitely the Chandler. Oh, okay. All right. Then who would Roland be? Uh, the Monica, obviously. <laughs> okay. All right. 
I was going to say Phoebe. I'm the Jennifer Aniston because I, because I go on to find I go on to have the strongest career. After yeah, this. I guess that's true. There You're you the go. Rachel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there, there you go. go. Perfect. <laughs> and I'll, and also the other four friends all die eventually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oof. Oof. To make her stronger. What? <laughs> <laughs> she just <laughs> <laughs> she absorbs you, their power. Yeah, you don't realize that the cast that, of friends. See, that's what it's like. That's the what Highlander. Joey should have been about. <laughs> Right. Oh gosh. Andy. Joey moving on after losing his friends in a terrible civil war. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, this is all um, inherently good, and it needs to stay in the podcast. Okay. Okay. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, you three are addressed to the nines in Cowboy World. I'm in, I'm to the tens. Except to the tens. for Elaine, who is to the tens, and uh, you come out of the. Out of Taylor's Taylors, and um, Miss Jeannie Ashbury, who you all met on your first day here, happens to walk by, and she looks over, and she gives you a whistle. Looking good, boys. I tip my hat to her and says, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Ellen's face turns red. It matches his shirt. Yes, you threw 